To my right is a sylvan glade full of wild birds. To my left, a wild flower meadow buzzing with bees, invertebrates, and full of biodiversity. And behind me, the most sustainable and I think the most beautiful building on the Olympic site, which is the velodrome, which is where I'm heading. I can't believe I'm touching, I'm kneeling on the surface of the velodrome, which in a month's time is going to be covered by cyclists whizzing round at some phenomenal speed. This is Siberian spruce, which has been designed by a man called Ron Webb, who must be something of a hero in cycling, because he designs nothing but cycling tracks like this. It's beautifully laid, beautifully smooth, and um, I can't find any splinters. The reason I'm here really is because I, I am an, an Olympic sustainability ambassador, uh, which means I'm, I'm, well, I suppose I'm, I believe passionately there's a lot going on here which is not spoken about, which is not talked about or celebrated, which should be. And that's partly to do with the story of the buildings and the place. Uh, this velodrome itself is naturally passively ventilated, it has huge thermal mass, it keeps itself cool in the day, warm at night. It's ultra low energy consuming uh, because of its light structure and its beautiful elegant roof made from steel cable, not steel girders. That means they saved a thousand tons of steel in the roof and they saved an enormous amount of concrete in the foundations as well. So this is an example of an intelligent, efficient, resource saving building, which is also at the same time, I have to say, the most beautiful building on the site in my view. Oh, that's only personal, of course, you understand that, but it is. So, as well as these buildings being the greenest ever Olympics buildings ever to have been constructed, as well as the event having this long-term kind of community social sustainability benefit, the event itself is also going to be greener than ever before. And um, that takes the form really of, in three ways, of, of, of being uh, greener in terms of uh, food, transport and waste. In terms of food, you'll see here an extraordinary number of small retailers selling farm assured red tractor produce, uh, fair trade produce. Uh, all the fish here is going to be Marine Stewardship Council MSC certified. Uh, in terms of the transport, you know, this is a no-car Olympic, so you'll be getting here by uh, train, uh, by underground, by Docklands Light Railway, but also by bicycle. There are 7,000 secure bicycle uh, parking slots here, and there's also a, a bicycle repair shop and uh, maintenance uh, program as well for every, anybody who wants to cycle here. And um, the recycling, well, there's an extraordinary kind of regime here of recycling that involves every time you buy anything here it'll come marked with a little coloured dot as to what type of recycling package that is and that you just find the appropriate coloured Dalek bin to stick it in. Actually on top of that there's a whole recycling and waste program and that's not to mention the fact that the entire site itself was over a number of years remediated and recycled here so and we're standing right now actually on a bridge supported by gabions made out of concrete which were buildings that stood here 10 years ago. This project has been a fantastic excuse to regenerate a piece of London. It is about the games, of course, in the next, you know, and, and, and everybody right now is focused on the next two to three months. But after that, this is going to be an extraordinary piece of urban regeneration. Mm -hmm.